Hello everyone and welcome to Butler Church, uh, Church at Home. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us. My name is Scott Holman and I'm pastor here with Butler Church uh, and pastor of one of our congregations called Common Ground. And in fact, as we move forward with Church at Home, as we've known it so such this far, uh, we're going to call this Common Ground Church at Home because we also have another Church at Home service and that is through Faith Community. Our faith community congregation, led by Jim Holm and their, their elders, uh, have a wonderful service uh, that they produce every week and is found online as well. And so there's Faith Community Church at Home and this uh, video, this uh, service, which we'll call the Common Ground Church at Home service. In addition to these two, we also have a service in Spanish, which our brother Elbio Carvalho pastors the Amori Fe congregation of Butler Church. And also, on the top of that, we have ministries for children, uh, programs and videos and lessons that all of this can be found on our website, butlerchurch.org. So three different uh, options, uh, two different languages, uh, and, and many different other opportunities can all be found on our website. And all of that said, I'm so glad you're with us here today to worship. And I want to invite us to bow in a word of prayer and to pray, prepare our hearts for worship, for study, uh, and for engaging together in worship. So would you bow with me in prayer? God, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to come into your presence, uh, to worship you wherever we are. God, we are longing for the day when we can once again come together in person on a regular basis. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, continue to root out this virus, Lord, that you would lead those that are, are studying and finding ways and medicines and treatments uh, to, to find a cure, to find a way that we can once again meet safely together. God, be with those that in the meantime are, are, are serving and caring for those that are ill and hospitalized. God, be with those of us uh, within our church and our community that are in high-risk categories, and we pray your protection over us. And, and God, just for, for all that's gone on in our world, whether it's been through this pandemic, whether it's been through uh, just the different uh, uh, protests and, and issues of racism and injustice, God, there's been so much that's swirled around us and, and troubled our hearts. And, and God, we pray that you would, you would be with us in that. Lord, we want to not move on from it, uh, but uh, to acknowledge it. And God, invite you into our pain. And, and God, even as later in our service we do that, we pray that you would meet us there. And God, as we sing and worship, would you meet us there as well? As we follow along with Chris as he leads the songs, God, may we, may we, we cry out ourselves in worship and, and hear from you, our Heavenly Father, in this time. And God, we pray your hand on the message and the word, God, that it would, it would speak to our hearts, that it would encourage and challenge and shape us, God, we pray. Father, we know that you can do these good things. We trust you in this time. And we invite you to do a good work. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue now in worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name And sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day Dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing. Sing like never before Oh 
slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to like many of you these past weeks months I've been in prayer but also lament um, I know that my heart has been broken uh, for our black brothers and sisters and my prayer is Lord what else can I do to support um, to be in community to listen and I want to Go to the scripture of Micah 6 8 where it says he has shown you immortal what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God we also know that God's justice is richer and deeper than we see in this world in Amos 5 24 it says but let justice roll on like a river righteousness like a never failing stream the Lord would like to see justice be like a never failing stream. We are called to love, to love our neighbor, to love our brethren as God loves us with an unconditional love. We're called to bear one another's burdens like it says in Galatians 6 2. So I ask that you join with me in prayer and lament for the blatant acts of hate against people of color that we pray and lament and that we hear the cries of those that are hurting, that we pray and lament um, uh, on the ongoing violence of the world and across our country, that we pray and lament um, the loss of lives due to gun violence and racism. Lord, we ask you that you be our guiding light 
to help us do the actions needed to undo racism and move towards reconciliation, towards healing, towards restoration. God of mercy and justice, be with us now as we listen and that we learn. May we be immersed in your word. May we work for justice and peace in all of the world. Give us wisdom to know what is right and the eyes to see what is wrong in our system. Teach us what is good and just and give us the courage to act. Amen. I'm wondering today, have you ever made something and forgotten to add the salt? Maybe have you ever eaten something where someone else who prepared the food forgot to add the salt? You probably noticed very quickly that something was not right with that. Uh, I've, I've been uh, myself, I've uh, been watching uh, salt content in, in foods and things that I eat. I'm trying to, to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of my heart and my health. And, 
And so I've been reading more labels lately and I've been uh, surprised to see just how much salt is in all of our food. And one thing that stunned me just recently was, was how much salt was in baked goods. Now some of you, you've, you've baked and you know that, yeah, there's lots of salt in there. But for me, I, I didn't know. I, I just thought, hey, those are sweets. That's different. But as I read the label recently on a package of cinnamon rolls that we were preparing to eat, it said every cinnamon roll had enough salt to meet my daily allowance for salt in one cinnamon roll. I was floored. I couldn't believe that much salt was in just one cinnamon roll. And it's, it's crazy to consider uh, how much salt is, is, is all over in all kinds of foods. And, and like I said in the beginning, if, if you've ever tasted something without salt, if you've ever forgot to add salt, especially maybe even something sweet, you'll immediately notice something is off. In fact, you may even want to spit it out. As I've eaten a lot of foods recently that are lower in salt or have no salt, I'm like, wow, this has zero flavor. I don't want this in my mouth. We know when things taste right or don't taste right. And when something's missing salt, my goodness, we can taste it and we can sense it right away. And today's message, we're, we're going to be talking about salt because, because Jesus takes us there in Matthew chapter 5. In fact, if you have a Bible, uh, begin turning there and find chapter 5. And see that, that Jesus is in chapter 5 uh, do, sharing a message. We call it the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and he's sharing what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what it means to follow in his footsteps. And as he's doing that in our passage today, he, he compares his people to salt. You might wonder, why, why is Jesus doing that? Why, what does he mean by that when, when he says his followers are to be salt? Well, what I think Jesus is getting at and, and what I want to prepare us to think about is that Jesus is saying this world, uh, for this world to to get right, to be right, to almost taste right in a sense. It needs salt and it needs us. It needs God's people to be that salt, to be that presence in the mix here in this world. Jesus has an incredible calling on his people that if we would follow through on that, on that calling, that this world, this, this nation, this city, this community, this, the neighborhood you find yourself in, that it would, it would be transformed as we followed that call. It's a calling that this world needs us to answer. He's calling us to be world changers in Him, to be the ones that make things right, to be the ones that restore and redeem and, and make things, lead people to new life. He's calling us to be world changers. And so the question I want to plant in the back of our heads is, as we start to dive in and talk about salt and, and eventually light as well, is are you ready, are you ready to be a world changer? Do you even see yourself that way as a follower of Jesus? Maybe you're not following Jesus yet. And, and I ask you to, to, to consider that question, would you like to be? Will you be a world changer with him? Let's look at the text and see what, what Jesus has for us in, in Matthew 5, starting in verse 13. It's there it says, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. As we keep reading now in verse 14, Jesus adds another image. He says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. I love how Jesus is teaching us here and and maybe for me, it's, it's, it's the way he's kind of simplifying it because he's, he's just recently, if we go back a few verses, we've been digging in and looking at those verses in the last few Sundays. We call it the Beatitudes. And it's, it's an important teaching that, that's full and rich and densely packed with, with so many good and but also challenging and, and, and worldview changing uh, truths in it. And, 
And now I think Jesus may be sensing that we need a little bit of something to stabilize us, something familiar. He gives us two very simple and common images to grab hold of to understand a very important truth. Jesus brings to us actually something that was just as applicable when he said it originally and today, thousands of years later, are still just as applicable to us. He brings us the image of salt and of light and he challenges us, his followers, the people of God, to embody those characteristics of these two things, these two images that he lays before us. See, Jesus is laying out for us a radical new way of life. And he's letting us know that this new way of life has a purpose. It's, and, and his purpose is not just to rescue us from an old life, but to enter us into a new life in a new way. He's literally wanting to transform us. Later in scripture, we'll read that he says he, he calls it a, a rebirth, like being born again. It's a reconstituting of who we are and how we think and how we act so that we in a sense, begin to join him in his mission. In fact, it's a rebirth meant to, to not stay as a baby, but to develop and to grow and to become like him and to join him in growing more and in, in bringing more new life into this world. The Apostle Paul speaks to this in 2 Corinthians 5 when he says, in him and by faith in him, we are a new creation. The old life is gone, a new life has come. And that's Jesus' goal. That is what he's come to do is, is to give us this new life. But if we read in, in 2 Corinthians 5, Paul goes on to say, Jesus has reconciled us. He's made us right with God. And he's called us and given us the purpose to be reconcilers, to, to join him in making things right, to join him in this important task of bringing new life to others. And how amazing is it that Jesus came in purpose, on purpose, he came on purpose to, to bring grace and mercy and restoration and to fill us with all joy and hope and love and peace. He's, he's come that we have that, but, but his intention, we need to hear it and absorb it today, is that we not stop with receiving it, but that we see that what we have received is meant to be shared. And in fact, that is part of receiving new life, is sharing what Jesus has given us. So in Matthew 5, he gives us two really great images, two simple yet profound images to understand what he means by all this. He says, first, you are to be, to his followers, he says, you are, you are to be the salt of the earth. We've already talked a little bit about this in the introduction. We're not unfamiliar with salt and what it can do to to the taste and flavor of things, but perhaps we're not as familiar today with what salt also does. In addition to add flavor, it, salt, and especially in the times in the crowd that would have heard this originally, they would have thought of this right away, but salt is, is something that can be used to preserve, that can be used to preserve meats. In fact, they didn't have refrigerators when Jesus was telling this story and telling the people to be salt. They didn't have refrigerators or freezers, and so they had meat, if they had meat, they would pack it in salt and the, and the salt would slow and even stop the decay from happening in the meat. It wouldn't rot, it would be preserved so that it could be eaten later. So as Jesus says, be salt of the earth, the imagery is not just a flavor for the, the original hearers of this, but also of, of preservation action, of, of saving the meat saving that which would deteriorate otherwise in this world. And on top of that even, salt was seen as something of a, of a purifier. It was used to purify things. We, we even today use salt in, in the purification of water and other substances in the Bible. In Ezekiel 16, 4, it references the fact that part of the, the tradition of, of the Jewish people was to, to clean a newborn, was, was to use salt on the new child, to, to clean the child with salt. It was a cleansing, a, a purifying action that salt played in that culture and in that day and, and even still today, but we're not as aware of it. But, but when the crowd heard Jesus say they were to be the salt of the earth, they, they would have had these things rolling in their brain. Jesus is inviting us to, to not only bring a little bit of flavor into this world, but he's, he's inviting us to, to be a preserving, saving force in this world, to be a pure and purifying force force in this world to, to take action, to be useful 
to be used powerfully and, and, and wonderfully in this world. Jesus plants this, this first image uh, uh, in our minds. He, he then brings a second image right after it. He says, you are to be the light of the world. And, and this image is maybe more straightforward for us even than salt. We understand what light does. We see how important it is. Any parent who has walked through their child's bedroom in the dark knows how important light is and how important it is to see the Lego pieces that you're going to step on barefoot. We need light to see things in the dark. And when we have light, we don't cover it up. Nobody buys a light and then puts a cover over it. You buy a light and put it in your home so that it can spread light into the room so that you can see what you need to see, that, that you can move without being injured, that you can, you can see clearly the path you need to take. See, Jesus said you were to be the light of the world, like a city on a hill. In, the, in those days when this, when this is being spoken, there, there's not street lights. There's not a lot of light out there. When it gets dark, it's dark. And for these people, as, as they lived in, in different far-off places or maybe traveled through the wilderness, they would look for, for light in the darkness. They would, they would see it, and it could guide them to the city. It could guide them to life. It could remind them that life exists. They may have even had Jerusalem in their minds, the city of God, a city on a hill, a representation of, of the very life and light of God. Jesus says you are to be the light of the world. You can see how these two very simple images profoundly impacted the, the imaginations of God's people, of, of those that were sitting on this hillside with him, that were maybe even still contemplating, do we want to join Jesus and, and follow him? These images of salt and light and their usefulness and, and, and their importance would have hit right away at their hearts and their minds. Jesus calls them and he calls us today to be a people that are salt and light. He's calling us to be a people that are life savers, life preserving agents with Jesus in this world. The, those that, that preserve and stave off death and, and sin and purify and, and bring about his holiness and his truth and his justice. Like salt, we preserve and, and purify and even bring some flavor into this world. He's called us to be light, to bring the light of Christ's love, the love of God and the life that it brings, the direction and, and comfort that it brings. He's called us to bring these things into the world. And notice in both instances, the scope of that influence. It's easy to read past this and, and talk about salt and light and miss the fact that, that Jesus says something very important about both of these. He, he says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So Jesus didn't have a, a small, simple, small scope of influence in mind when he said these things. He, he says them and, and we, we breeze past them. But if you pause and think about this, Jesus is talking to a group of people on the side of a hill that if we read earlier is made up of, of many people that he has healed. People that were previously sick or or crippled, or bothered, or on the outskirts of town, that they were on the outskirts of society. These were people that were diseased and sick and despised and rejected and ignored by society. They'd been injured and taken advantage of. They had no voice, they had no power, no influence in society. They were at the mercy of society for everything they got. And here Jesus says to them, you are salt and you are light. You are world changers. You are salt of the earth, not just your own life, not just your own circle of friends. You are salt of the earth. You are light of the world. How incredible is that invitation, is that calling, when we consider the fact that he's saying this then and now to all people. He's saying it to them and he's saying it to us. He's saying it to you. You can be a world changer. I've changed you. I, I want to change you so that you would be a world changer. You are salt. You are salt. The life-preserving, life-saving, sin-destroying salt of the earth. That is you. 
You are light. You are the eye-opening, hope-giving, sin-destroying. You are the love-sharing light of the world. Why? Because life, Jesus gives life. He came to be salt and light himself, to purify us, to preserve us, to save us, to bring us light and love and, and life in him. None of that is meant to be contained and covered and held secret. It is designed to be shared. It cannot be contained. It has to be put out into the world. His salt and his light are not just for us, but it's for our family and for our friends. It's for our neighbors. It's for our city and our community and our, our state and our nation and our world. The kingdom of God, world changers, are not just limited to the most powerful, not limited to the most wealthy, to the most educated, to the most well-spoken. It's Jesus isn't sending this invitation just to the upper crust of society. He's not talking to the, just the most eloquent speakers or the most well-connected individuals. As we read the whole Bible, in fact, we see God time and time again using and even favoring those that are poor, that are on the fringe, that are on the outside, that are, are poor speakers, that are, are complicated and, and even failing in, their, in many endeavors. God is using these imperfect people over and over and over again to change the world. And that invitation was extended when Jesus came on the side of a hill to those that were there and his invitation extends to us today to be salt and light. And you might be sitting at home today saying, I'm not a world changer. How could I be a world changer? Maybe your, your eyes, like mine, are, are, are focused so easily on our own faults and our weaknesses, our own deficits and our own abundances. I mean, there's, there's things that we feel like we may fall short and others that we feel we're overburdened. And, and we say to God, how can I be a world changer? What can I do? You might say, I, I, I don't know enough. I don't have enough, God. I don't know enough. I don't, I don't have enough. I don't, I don't speak well enough. I, I'm not old enough. I'm not strong enough. God, how could I be a world changer? Or maybe on the flip side of that, we're saying things like, I, I've got too much. I've got too much happening. I've got too many bills. I've got too many commitments. I've got too many problems, too many hurts, too many miles, too many bridges burned. I'm just old to all of us, whether we feel like we, we're not enough or we've got too much. Jesus says to us, whether we feel like it or not, whether we realize it or not, Jesus says, you're the, you're the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. In Christ, you are world changers. Don't hold back. Don't cover it up. Don't sit on the sidelines. Don't put it on the shelf. Bring out that light, that salt, and bring it out so that it can, it can radiate into this world that, that Jesus can shine brightly through your deficits and your faults, that he can ease your burdens and lighten your load, and he can, he can use you to, to be that, that packing on of life-preserving goodness and preservation and purifying work. That as you wrestle with the abundant things and challenges that are on your life, that, that, that he is alongside you, working with you, carrying those burdens, even as you seek to burden yourself with the needs of others. Allow his light and life to fill you. Allow him to enter you more fully, to, to come alongside you and, and pull you and direct you and, and work alongside you to bring light and life into this world. In fact, I want to encourage us in a couple different ways today. I want to challenge us to, to consider as, as we think about being world changers, of being salt and light, to, to stay connected to the true source, to stay connected to Jesus, to get into his word and to get into his fellowship of believers. It's so vitally important that we as followers of Jesus continue to feast on his word, to study it and let it shape and mold us and fill us and to also sit at the feet of others who teach and to, to come alongside others that are struggling with us and, and to listen and to learn from one another and to take action 
together, to seek to do good. And that's the second point. Stay connected, one, but two, seek to do something, to do good. I love that Jesus broke it down in just the simplest terms. Good deeds, do good things and let that light shine. Let that salt preserve and care for others. Take action. Do something. Serve a purpose, serve a person. And in that, you'll, you'll know you're on the right track if you're getting uncomfortable. You'll be uncomfortable because it may take some time. You'll get uncomfortable because it may ask you to do more than you feel capable. You'll get uncomfortable because it'll, it'll delve into the areas in which you feel there's a deficit in you or there's an abundance in you where you've got too much or not enough. And when we press in with Jesus to be salt and light, we're going to bump up against those two things. I'm not enough. I've got too much. And we know we're pressing in the right direction when we're pressing against those worries and those fears and those challenges. But as we stay connected with him, as we take his lead, and we follow him to seek and do good, we're going to see him come and fill our lives and bless us. Even as we're tired and we're wore out, we're going to experience his blessing because we're going to see his blessing flow into other people, into their lives. Thirdly, I want us to encourage others around us in this way, to encourage each other to stay connected and to seek to do good. See, I think that saltiness, that, that, that flavor aspect is, is an important thing. You know, whenever you put salt on something, it, it brings out the flavor and and I want us to consider uh, uh, being the kind of a salt shaker of sort to, to brothers and sisters in the church and, and other followers of Jesus to, to put some salt on and, and just to kind of bring out the flavor that, that God's church has and, and to bring out that flavor and, and, and to be an incredible influence in our community as a group effort. It's a church effort. It's a people of God effort. So let's encourage each other. Let's bring out the flavor in one another. Let's be salt and light and, and stoke the flames of fire of light within us so that together we can be world changers. That's what God has called us to. That's what I want to see God grab hold of Butler Church in every congregation, in every form, every person, that we would be together and as individuals world changers for Christ, that we would be salt and light. I pray that that's what we can do together as a church. And I want to invite you to, to maybe consider doing a couple practical things with us as a church in this regard. One is this evening, if you're watching this on Sunday, uh, June uh, 28th, you'll know that this evening we're having a prayer walk. We're going to walk into our neighborhood and pray over it because there's been violence. There's been um, things take go, taking place in our, in our community that are not good. And so a group of us are going to walk and pray. Others that aren't able to walk are going to stay on campus and, and pray over our community from one of our rooms. And so here's a chance to get on campus if you'd like to, to be together and to pray. A group of us will walk and pray. And you can even sign up and go online uh, and get a, a, a prayer guide and pray from home. But we want to invite you to take that step. A second way that you could participate in, in being salt and light is to join us for our food distribution. Typically, it's the first Friday of the month, which would be the third. Because of the holiday, it's being delayed one week to July 10. Uh, but that's an opportunity to be salt and light, uh, to come and to serve our community in a, in a need for food. Uh, and it may be uncomfortable. Just like prayer walking might take you out of a comfort zone, uh, getting up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. to come and to serve food in a community on a warm day uh, is going to push you out of your comfort zone, perhaps. And, and maybe it requires uh, adjusting schedules and time to be available, but I want to encourage you to consider coming and joining us July 10th to serve our community, to love our community, be salt and light uh, to those that we love and, and, and cherish within our community. So those are two practical ways to get involved. But I want us overall to grab hold of that message and that truth that Jesus is calling us to be world changers. He's calling us to be salt and light. Let's do it together, church. Amen. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for loving us, for, for calling us, for equipping us to be salt and light. God, you've poured into us. You have, you've done an amazing thing in sending your son who entered into our world to, to be salt and to be light, to, to preserve us, to, to purify us, to, to save us, and, and to shine the light of your love and your care and, and your hope and peace 
into our lives. Lord, we're thankful for that gift. And God, we ask that you would help us to, to share that gift, to shine brightly, to be salt and light, to be world changers. God, may we, may we see a new life come in us, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our community, in our city, in our state, in our nation, in our world, God. May we see the world transformed by your church, not just Butler Church, God, but, but your church around the world, God, and across the street and down the block, God, all of us together, God, may we be world changers with you. May we see your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you and keep you. Thank you so much for joining us today for Common Grounds Church at Home.